Welcome to Gaming is in Session. I'm too busy with Elden Ring, and Adam is busy playing with Strangers, Rings, and Paradise, or something like that with Final Fantasy. So we're dipping into the well this week with a little topical Sweet 16 of video game controllers. Adam, what is Sweet 16, and can I eat it? <laughs> you wish! Just like March Madness, the basketball tournament, we have Sweet 16 of controllers. Now we're doing, I believe it was, what was it, Alex? 2006 and before, so kind of vintage controllers, and we bracketed them. We're going to have them go head to head. We're going to do the Sweet 16 today, next video, Elite 8, and then we'll get down to what is the best vintage controller of them all. Alex, it's almost a speed round here. It's going to be fun. Are you ready? I'm ready, Adam. I've played with all of these controllers, and I feel like I should have the final say here. I have a feeling you haven't played with many of them. How are you going to convince me that I'm wrong? I've played with quite a few of these, sir. Now, number one, the first matchup we have is the 10th seed Xbox Duke versus the 7th seed, the PlayStation 1 controller. Tell me about the Duke, because that one I have not played with. Take yeah, a Duke. So, the, take a Duke. So when the Xbox first came out, it was the big joke was like how ridiculously huge the controller was. And I remember Penny Arcade had a funny comic of a guy with huge hands saying he was the designer of the controller. He didn't understand what the big deal was. Um, the thing was gargantuan and it spent like most of the real estate of the controller was this like huge Xbox logo right in the middle. It was so large, so inconvenient that ultimately Microsoft released the Xbox S controller that was just the same controller, but smaller. Um, but the Duke was really good for Halo, apparently, like so good that people wanted it remade for the Xbox One, I, I guess, or the Xbox Series X or one of those things. So you can still get the Duke around. Um, I think it was actually good for Panzer Dragoon, not Panzer Dragoon, uh, Gun Valkyrie. But beyond that, yeah, it, there was no need for it. It was a next gen controller. People liked next gen at the time. People liked the rumble and everything like that. It worked well for Halo, which is the whole reason to own an Xbox. So I guess it was good for that, and that was the reason it existed. Well, my argument is, and correct me, it used battery, right? No, it was back then. All controllers were plugged in, man. I thought Xbox and even now had a battery in it. I mean, now it has batteries, but back then there weren't wireless controllers. Everything was plugged in. Okay, fair enough. Good. Well, PlayStation 1 controller is, it's beautiful. It is a staple in the PlayStation universe. And it still is kind of the foundation of the controllers today. No analog sticks on the PlayStation 1, but four buttons, little R and L. It's, it's beautiful. It's classic, little directional pads can play Spyro, played all the, the best games on the PlayStation. Absolutely. Uh, Deadly Premonition was PS2, wasn't it? Nope, it was 360. Well, it was definitely with the PlayStation 2. I just looked up. Anyhow, PlayStation, it's classic, man. you got to love it. And the thing is, it's not huge. It feels good. It's ergonomic in your hand. That Duke controller was like, yeah, it looked like holding a pie or a pizza pan. It's too big. Ergonomically, it's going to reduce the amount of time you're able to play. PlayStations was comfortable. Obviously, the added additions. I think PlayStations is better, honestly. The Duke is just too big. They're like, you have long fingers even to get to anything. No. See, the thing is about the PlayStation controller is it was so bad, they just released the, the, dual, the dual analog controller shortly thereafter. It was just like, this is what we're using going forward. Nobody is asking for an old PlayStation controller. As a matter of fact, I don't think you can play some of the games that came out on the PlayStation 1 without the analog controller. It, 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 it's more or less a useless controller, not helped by the fact that it was a complete ripoff of the SNES, but it added these confusing L2 and R2 buttons that were heavily underutilized at the time. People still want to use the Duke. You can use the Duke on every Xbox game. You can't use the PlayStation 1 controller on every PlayStation 1 game. For that reason, because most people forgot PlayStation even had a controller without an analog stick, I think we got to go with the Duke on this one. Well, I disagree. I think Duke sucks. I rather, Already. I, I actually played with the PlayStation 1 controller. I never had any issues. I thought it was fine. And because we, we didn't anticipate this happening right off the bat, I'll take the first bean. I take a bean. If the bean is good, I win. 
If the bean is bad, Alex wins. I'm going to spin to see what bean I get. Oh, already. Of course it's barf. Of course. Oh, it's the barf. very first thing is barf. I just got to power through it. I just got to do it. Um, next map. <laughs> it's peach. Oh, no. <laughs> it's peach. oh, no. What a way to lose. What a way to lose. It's a peach. PlayStation 1 moves from that. Oh, man. Is it? Yeah, no, it's peach. It's got a funk to it. Is Tell it? me about the number three seed, a Sega Menacer. So the Sega Menacer was um, Sega's approach to the light gun gaming in the Sega Genesis era. So it was like, I don't know, if you know the Super Scope, which is the other one in this competition, um, the Menacer was a light gun game for Sega, Sega Genesis. I think there was like maybe one game that was released for it, and it was just a collection of mini games. Um, the thing about the Minister was that it was like had a pistol and then like another thing to attach to it and then another thing to attach to it to make it look really cool. There was just absolutely zero games. And it, it, here's how I know it wasn't a great controller is I tried to find every reason possible to buy one of these because I wanted to get it and add it to my you know retro game collection. And I could not think I could not find one good reason to get the Sega Minister. So I didn't. Per there's, there's zero good games for it. Zero good games for it. Might have worked great. Nobody would know because I bet the games designed for it were horrible. Well, uh, fittingly, the versus the matchup here is the Nintendo Super Scope. And Super Scope, actually, I played it once. It was pretty cool. It took batteries. It was a suck on batteries. It really drained them. It worked okay. It wasn't great, but there were games to play with it. And it was just one of those cool peripherals that Nintendo had they had so power pad power glove all these different and super scope was one of them i, I actually kind of enjoyed it it was neat i didn't have a ton of games to play with it but for what it did if you were especially close to the tv or what you know whatever it worked okay um because of that i mean you kind of i think super scope wins this i mean you didn't even put forth really good argument for menacer i think because there's not really one there's, there's no good argument for menacer you can play terminator 2 the arcade game do you want to play that you know uh, it's better than some of the bull crap i've played but no no i don't want to walk into that so i'm glad we agree on it next we have the five seed a power glove versus the eight seed virtual boy. I'll let you talk about the virtual boy because I know he he is near and dear to your heart. So the power glove is another Nintendo staple. Unfortunately, not necessarily for a, a good way. So they've got this janky three sensors that go on your TV. It looks at the glove and can monitor where it's at. And then it also has these little this book for all the different games and you got to put in codes and for each game there's different crap you can do to have it register and follow doesn't work very well i think even if it's heyday it didn't work very well i think what was it, super mario bros is a movie maybe that's it was like his introduction to the world it was the whiz the not, whiz not the, was that was it the whiz or the wizard i think the wizard yeah, I think the Wiz is the Michael Jackson. It wasn't Super Mario <laughs> which, So it was a huge cult. Like everyone was excited for it. And still now, people, I think it's more of like a, oh, the power glove, but not like no one really wants to use it. It's just a cool piece of gaming history. As far as it being a good controller, I can't really uh, argue too much uh, because it, it doesn't work that well. Some games it was okay. But the question is, it may not work well, but does the Virtual Boy controller work better? All right, so here's the thing. Virtual Boy came out. I thought it was awesome. I got over the fact that everything was red. I loved the 3D-ness of it. It was beautiful, but it was totally, you know, thrown out the window. Everybody hated it. The great casualty of Virtual Boy is this controller. I love the controller. It, it's got like these dual prongs like you would expect for the, Super Nintendo, or for the PlayStation, but they're comfortable. It's got an A button and a B button and a start and a select. Keeps things simple like an NES controller. So you automatically know what's going on. It feels like a Game Boy, right? They get the D-pad, but Nintendo decided to double down on one of the greatest innovations of all time, the D-pad. It gave you a second D-pad on the right-hand side. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why there's two D-pads, but I'll tell you one thing. It is freaking awesome in Tellero Boxer to be moving your hands with each D-pad depending on where you're pressing. It, it worked beautifully. It worked beautifully, maybe only in that game, but that's the only game I care about. At least one game it worked well, as opposed to Power Glove, where nothing worked well. It's got to be Virtual Boy. Yeah, you let me play your Virtual Boy once, and I will admit, it was like a 
N64 controller in a way yeah. and PlayStation had a baby or something. You're right. It, it worked pretty well. That wasn't my complaint. Controller, you're right. It felt good. I'm perfectly fine pushing it forward because I think it truly was the better, the better controller. So now we have the NES Advantage, which is the one seed versus the nine seed, the simple NES controller. And so the, the NES Advantage, you know, I never used one as a kid. I knew the basic it was the fact that it kind of triggered. I automatically kept mashing A or B wherever you wanted for it, which in games like, I don't know, Contra or some of the older games were really, you just have to constantly mash the button that gets tiring. So it's a, real, it's a real big advantage there, hence the name. But the NES controller is, it's a classic, man. I mean, I love how they didn't oversimplify it or over complex, you know, the, the buttons and the controls, just an A, B and direction, man. You know, every now and then they tried to throw in select or something, some of the games that made it jank. But I feel like you got to go with the classic NES controller. Not only is it compatible for all NES games, it is a cultural phenomenon, and I think it's a better controller. What do you think about the two? I think it's obvious the answer is going to be NES because it was a revolutionary game controller, but I want to give a shout out to the NES Advantage for just trying some new stuff. All right, NES Advantage had that automatic button, so you could just hit the thing, and it would tap the A automatically. That was great, like you said. Um, it was it was a big joystick, so you can play NES games like you're playing the arcade. So if anybody out there loves a joystick over like a D-pad, there you go, that's your jam. I remember having one of these, and I would I would hold it in my hand like a normal controller because I could I was never grew up playing joysticks, and so I would reach my thumb to try to grab the analog stick and just hold the NES Advantage like a normal controller. Terrible idea, terrible idea. Other thing about the NES Advantage, I could be wrong about this, but I remember having a controller just like the NES Advantage that was wireless, but it was like infrared wireless. It had a little red little red LED light on it that you'd have to connect to the other end of your room underneath the TV and it would communicate that way. It worked terribly, didn't work, but it was there. It was awful. So NES wins. The advantage is also the one that had that, it was like an angled board to place it on, right? <laughs> so so you can make it feel like an arcade cabinet yeah, yeah. But, but it like, was too it was too low like, well, like are you gonna are you gonna play final fantasy like with an arcade cabinet set up like yeah would that be fun <laughs> okay nes i think uh moves moves on so number two seed atari joystick versus the 16 seed uh, super nintendo so i mean how, how is how is Atari joystick the two seed here? That's like the worst controller ever. Listen, I freaking hate is, this thing. The thing is, dude, here's the thing. First of all, it's a vintage competition. Atari is vintage, baby. We're not talking about are the games good. We're talking about that controller. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, that, that joystick that you move in whatever direction, however speed you want. The button is right there. It's simplicity at its finest. Does it work? Not really. I bet when you first bought it, it worked. Uh, nowadays, you can't find a can't find a working one. But the joystick, I think, just there was something to. I think simplicity is beautiful at times. You know, nowadays all these controllers have so many buttons, and now the stupid control pad is a button. Now, it's ridiculous. Atari, you could not have never played a video game in your life. You pick it up, you know what to do. I think there is beauty in that. I'm pretty sure you're going to have a, a good argument for the Super Nintendo, though. The Atari joystick, here's the thing about the Atari joystick, is you had to hold it in your hand as a base because there was so much resistance on the joystick itself. It, and the, that, you have to spin an entire, use an entire hand just to keep it in place so you can push against yourself constantly. It's so, such horrible design. I much prefer like a, the paddle wheel thing that you could do where you're not fighting against yourself to use you it. You didn't use it correctly. That's your issue. Here's the thing. So if this is your body. Uh, how can I best do this? This is your body. You, you like sit. You sit on the ground with your legs in front of you. You wedge the controller up to your body near your groin. And then you're sitting there and you're wiggling it. And your mom in the kitchen, she doesn't know if you're playing with yourself or you're playing Atari, but that doesn't matter. 
Because with your weight on that and your groin, it's not going anywhere. So you've been using it wrong. <laughs> I thought I, I should have guessed when you decided to talk about the joystick that you would have been speaking from personal experience a lot with that. <laughs> Um, the SNES, maybe more revolutionary than the NES controller, it added, made four face buttons and gave us shoulder buttons. Um, and on top of the fact that we have D pads now, like, that, can we keep adding things to the list that Nintendo is innovating and making mandatory in future game controllers? Um, it's, you know, a testament to this controller that we're still seeing face buttons mapped out that way. SNES controller all the way here, all the way. I can't, I can't really argue there. I can't do it. So next we got the 6C Dreamcast versus the 11C, the PlayStation 2 controller with those analog sticks. So as I mentioned, I already like the PlayStation controller. You didn't, but now I'm assuming you do like the PlayStation 2 controller. I have used this as well. Is it nicer than the PlayStation 1 controller? Yes. Yeah, of course it is. But the analog sticks are a welcome addition. I remember playing a bunch of great games, Dot Hack, NFL Street, Gex. I forgot if that was PlayStation 1 or 2. <laughs> you listed off great games for the PlayStation 2. Maybe one of the greatest consoles of all time. And you're saying Dot Hack and Gex. This is the console that brought great. Dot Hack three. is great. <laughs> this is a console no, that brought And that's why I played three. as a kid. I'm not talking Final Fantasy X. Uh, you know, Garvey it, it, game. <laughs> Gran Turismo 3. Who uh, cares racing? Listen, Metal Gear Solid the games that I personally played. Yes. I played those yes. games. I didn't play those other ones. Yes. PlayStation 2 controller is great. Two analog sticks, buttons, shoulder pads. It's black. It's sleek. It looks good. What more do you want? It's, I think, I forgot what's Dreamcast. It's going to be a tough, tough matchup. Uh, but, you know, that, that's my argument for PlayStation 2. What did PlayStation 2 add to the video game controller ecosystem that everybody else was like, that's a good idea, let's carry it forward? I'll answer it, nothing. It added nothing to the ecosystem. What did the Dreamcast do? What did it add to the video game ecosystem a huge that everybody, controller. Second that everybody else the decided dude. was important to carry forward? And that is analog controller buttons. On the Dreamcast, it had sh analog shoulder buttons. It had shoulder buttons that vary depending on how far you press them, like the triggers, like what you see on the DualSense now, people are excited about what you see on the Xbox 360 thereafter, what you saw on the Xbox thereafter. Important innovations. Here's other things that were cool about the, the Dreamcast controller. Did you know that it had a screen on the memory card? You stick the memory card in there and there's a screen and it has vital information for you. Like in Resident Evil, you can see your health or you have like a little pet that stays with you in an RPG or it just has like, you know, items in your inventory when they're gonna run out. That is cool stuff. I mean, granted, it's your memory card and it has a screen. So when the battery dies, you lose everything. Um, so that sucked. But it was an interesting innovation. Also, the memory card had its own little controller too. So you can take the memory card out and then like play like a Tamagotchi or something like that and keep the little guy alive and put it back. And it was wild stuff. It was wild times. And the Dreamcast controller was good, although the analog stick hurt the hell out of my finger because it wasn't soft and squishy. It had these like hard plastic rubber things on it and the face button kind of sucked and the D-pad was abysmal. But analog shoulder buttons, that was an innovation that was carried forward. PlayStation 2 carried nothing forward. Uh, you missed the, the whole thing. I was sold on Dreamcast because of one thing you didn't even mention it. It had another innovation, which was the microphone. You could talk that, yeah. that semen game. Uh, you had to, semen. Well, the microphone was like an accessory you had to add on to it. Yeah, but still, the fact that it allowed you to do that is awesome. And so I'll, I'll give you that. I give you the, the Dreamcast is very unique. It's very cool. Unfortunately, I've actually never got to play with it. But I didn't know that about the, the triggers. And you're right. It, it's a little big. There are definitely some downsides, but... I'm okay with moving that through. I'm okay right. with that. All right. Dreamcast moved through. Sega Genesis, which is our 13 seed, versus the 15 seed Nintendo 64. So I've used both of these, and I have to say, easily for me, the N64 controller is better. It allows you to have that analog stick. The controller is a weird shape, but it's not uncomfortable. You pretty much, I always pick, do I want to use a directional pad or the analog stick? And that's how you decide where you put your arms or your hands. And so, I mean, all the games like Super Mario 64, Pokemon Puzzle League, 
uh, pilot wings, like all of these, you get to change your hand positions. It's got the, the trigger, the Z, and then the two shoulder buttons. It's a classic. I mean, now it's ugly. It's kind of, I'm pretty sure they haven't made a Super Nintendo classic because they're like, I don't know how to fit one of these controllers in there. Uh, so, I mean, you know, that is its biggest downfall, in my opinion, is its size, its awkwardness, and how ugly it is. I think it works great. And so, I don't know. I would love to see how you think the Genesis controller, other than looking better, could possibly be better than the N64. The debate of the Genesis controller versus the Nintendo 64 controller is a debate over what do you want, too many buttons or too few buttons? The Sega Genesis controller, in a time when Super Nintendo was coming out and they had four face buttons and two shoulder buttons, Sega was like, let's just do three. Let's just do three buttons. That's it. Try to fit all your gaming into three buttons. And guess what? It was a terrible idea. Have you tried playing Street Fighter 2 with three buttons, Adam? I heard it's a nightmare. Yeah, you have to like hit start. Also, there's no select button. So you have to like hit start, hold down start, and then hit like B to do like a high punch or just hit B to do a low punch. Like, <laughs> it's awful. It's ridiculous. And that's what the Genesis is all about. It was terrible. Um, let's see. What are some good things about the Genesis controller? It's lightweight. If you break it, it's probably cheap to replace. Um, you probably think you break it because the D-pad is horrible. The D-pad, did, didn't the D-pad have like this weird thing where you can like press on the outside or you oh, can yeah. press so it was, Yeah, it wasn't like four buttons. It was like this rolling, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was absolutely terrible. No, nothing good about the Sega Genesis controller. I think it might be the worst controller ever made. And then they tried to make it better with the six button controller, but it was just like, now, now I have to buy another controller to make up the fact that you designed, horrible design of your first controller. Nintendo 64 has a bajillion buttons, but you want to use all of them except for the D-pad. Nobody ever used a D-pad on the N64. They should have just cut off that half of the controller, made the Z, the L button, same thing. It, I love the N64 controller, but a whole half of that thing doesn't need to exist. But N64 wins here, I think, pretty clearly. Okay, awesome. Our final matchup for the Elite Eight is, or Sweet 16, excuse me, is the Sega Saturn, which is a 12 seed, versus the 14 seeded Nintendo Mouse. So I like the Nintendo mouse. I will admit that I only use it for Nintendo paint, but in doing research, we found out there are tons of games you can play with this thing. Doom, uh, racing games, like all types of games for Nintendo mouse. And I just remember in Nintendo, you know, Mario paint being able to just, they had the little fly swat game. I remember that one very clearly. <laughs> I mean, real fun. Then obviously you could paint, paint by number, freehand. It worked really well. I mean, it was a plug and play. It worked like a mouse should. So I, I think it, it's simple. It's nothing revolutionary, as you've mentioned in the past, but it works really well. It's kind of like a peripheral controller. It wouldn't be your main one, but I really enjoyed it. It has fond memories in my mind. Uh, tell me about the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn controller was just the six button Genesis controller with shoulder buttons added on. It's just them playing the catch up game with Super Nintendo controller and not quite getting there. The D pad felt a little bit better. The controller itself looked really cool and it feels good in your hand, but it still just kind of has like some of that cheap plastic you feel that the Genesis controller had. Um, so it, it's okay. It, it's as good as a Super Nintendo controller but it's a generation behind because in the Sega Saturn era, you're wanting to do 3D stuff and this isn't allowing it. So I think, I mean, think about the Nintendo mouse is, even if it was a horrible controller, you could take a little mouse ball out of it and play with that. And that was really fun to play with just as a bouncy ball. That's way better than the Sega Saturn controller itself. So I personally have fond, of, I've played with both of these. I have fond of memories of the Nintendo mouse controller. Uh, here's, the, here's the thing. I want to use the Nintendo mouse controller, but just as a USB mouse on my computer, because I like the clicky, the two little Nintendo purple mouse click buttons. Those are cool. Put a modern mouse wheel in the middle of it. That's a fun mouse to have at your computer. It would look so nice, like aesthetically. It's, I like it. I think Nintendo mouse controller wins here for me. 
I think you're letting your emotions overtake you. The, the bracket and the challenges, which is the better controller? You can't tell me the Sega Saturn is a worse controller. Was it behind what everyone else was doing? Yes, but it is the better controller. It is time for you to eat a bean oh, no, to decide, is the Nintendo mouse moving forward or is it going to be succumbed by Sega Saturn? Tutti Fruity or Stinky Socks? Here we go. Okay, at I least have a drink. one that's not too bad. These are bean boozles, by the way, if, if you've not tried them. Uh, that looks fair. Time to pay the piper. What's it going to be? Sega Saturn or Nintendo Mouse? That's Stinky Socks. Stinky Socks. Sega Saturn goes on. Oh, my. I love it. Yeah. Ask any person. Ask any person who's played Doom on Saturn or Doom on Super Nintendo with a Nintendo mouse, which one controlled better? And you'll, you'll know the truth. Okay, I'll, sure thing, sure. The so beans are spoken. 2022 March Madness Sweet 16 Vintage Controller Tournament. And so next time we are going to have an Elite Eight of PlayStation 1 versus the Super Scope, Virtual Boy versus the original NES controller, the Super Nintendo controller versus Dreamcast, the N64 versus the Saturn. So thank you for watching. Remember, this is Gaming Court. We are the judges. Our ruling is final, and court is adjourned.